Hello lovelies, in this video the brilliant Dr Edwards is going to be talking to you about DNA replication, how we know that it's semi-conservative replication, the experiments were done and how that semi-conservative replication actually happens. DNA replication. When does DNA replication happen? Well, it's during cell division during the S phase of the cell cycle, or the synthesis phase, this happens in during interphase. Why does DNA replication need to happen? Well, if we didn't replicate the DNA, then we wouldn't have two sets of DNA to go into the two new cells. And also we need both new cells after cell division to have identical copies of the genome in their nucleus. How does DNA replication happen? It happens through a process called semi-conservative replication. This term comes from the fact that half of each new DNA molecule that we're going to make when we replicate the DNA is that half a strand will come from the original DNA molecule and the other half will be a new strand. So half, semi, and also then conserved, we're saying that the original molecule is being conserved because half of that is staying in the new DNA molecule that we're making. So we're saying the original strand that is in the new molecule has been conserved. We need to be able to explain how the structure of DNA allows for efficient replication in this way. Firstly, there are hydrogen bonds that hold the bases together. We know that these bonds are relatively weak, but really what we need to say is just that they can be easily broken so that the two strands can split apart in order for us to be able to copy them. Each strand can then act as a template. So by being able to split the DNA in half and by each of them being complementary to each other, we are able to then build new strands off of each of the two strands we have once we've separated it. What also makes this work so well is that the bases join through complementary base pairing. So when we have our two template strands, the new bases that join will only be A's joining with T's and C's joining with G's. This means the replication should be accurate and we should create perfect sort of mirror image copies for both of our template strands. And it keeps errors down to a minimum. There are still errors in DNA replication, but it helps to reduce them. We describe this structure as anti-parallel. So the strands are anti-parallel to each other. You can see this more clearly if we label the ends. One end begins with a sugar that is known as the three prime end, and one end will end with a phosphate that's known as the five prime end. So on the top, we can see it's going three prime to five prime, whereas on the bottom, it's been flipped. So it's the other way around. It's going in the opposite direction or anti-parallel. So here we have our DNA helix, and you can see that it started to unwind. And hydrogen bonds between the bases are broken, as we said. This is done by the enzyme DNA helicase. And you can see that it's kind of pushing along as the DNA is unwinding. It's separating those two strands and creating those two template strands. And then what we're seeing is that the free DNA nucleotides that are in the nucleus are able to come along and bind through complementary base pairing to their complementary base on the template strand. This is because the bases on the template strand are exposed, and so they will find their matching complementary base, and then hydrogen bonds between them will form. Then we need another enzyme called DNA polymerase. It's really important that you put the word DNA in front of these enzymes when we're talking about DNA replication. The DNA polymerase enzyme moves along these new bases, and it catalyzes the condensation reaction that forms the phosphodiester bonds that join the phosphate sugar backbone of these new nucleotides together. So it forms that new strand. This process is actually quite complex because it requires two DNA polymerase enzymes, one moving in one direction along the strand and one moving in the opposite direction along the strand. They are technically moving in the same direction because they're moving from three prime to five prime, which is the way we describe the order of the DNA bases. So the DNA polymerase moving from three prime to five prime towards where the DNA helicase is unwinding the strands 
that can just keep going and going and going in one continuous motion. The other DNA polymerase also has to move three prime to five prime, and obviously that strand on the opposite side is the opposite way around. So it has to move away from the DNA helicase enzyme. So it has to move along, create a short fragment, then detach, wait for more bases to be exposed and more bases to join, and then go back, join them up, move along again until it reaches where it got up to, detach, and repeat itself. So it's built in small fragments, and that's what we call the lagging strand, because it happens a bit more slowly. And the leading strand happens quicker. What we ultimately get is two identical molecules of DNA, and they each contain one copy of the old strand, the original strand that we can see up here, and then one copy of this new strand that we've built with these new free DNA nucleotides and DNA polymerase. We need to know how this method of DNA replication was discovered. It was discovered in 1958 when two scientists disagreed about how they thought DNA replication occurred. They conducted an experiment using E. coli bacteria to see who was correct. One of the scientists named Stahl believed that semi-conservative replication take place, whereas the other, Meselson, believed that the replication was actually conservative. In his theory, the original strands would separate and then copies would be made with those new nucleotides, but then the two new strands would rejoin and the two original strands would rejoin. So there would be no mixing of old and new strands. In the first stage of their experiment, they created two control groups where they grew E. coli bacteria on two different types of nutrient medium. One that contained an isotope of nitrogen that was heavier or denser, 15, and one that contained normal standard nitrogen 14. The idea behind this is that the bacteria growing in the culture that only had access to 15 nitrogen, as in heavier nitrogen, they would incorporate that into their nucleotides. And so after a few generations, all the nucleotides in their DNA molecule would contain this heavier isotope of nitrogen. Then they extracted DNA from each set of bacteria and they centrifuged them to separate this DNA that they extracted by weight. What they found was the more dense DNA from the bacteria that were grown on the nitrogen 15 has sunk to the bottom or was lower down in the centrifuge tube than the lighter DNA from the bacteria grown with access to only nitrogen 14. The next step was to take a culture of the bacteria that was grown with the heavy isotope and had the heavy DNA, and they transferred these bacteria to the medium where only nitrogen 14 was available. So they moved plates, they changed what they were given access to. They then extracted the DNA again after the first generation. The bacteria were doubling it around every 20 minutes, so once they had a new generation of bacteria, then they extracted the DNA to see what had occurred in terms of DNA replication. So remember our controls, we had those two, a light and a heavy band. What they found with the first generation of these bacteria is they actually saw a band somewhere in the middle and it was a bit thicker. They then did the same again after the second generation. So about 40 minutes to an hour later, once all of the bacteria had doubled again, they took these and then looked at the second generation DNA. This time they saw two bands. One light band in the same place as the 14N was in the control, and one slightly thinner band still in that middle position. What this showed in that in the first generation bacteria, the DNA was mixed between 15 and 14N. So we had a mixture of light and heavy DNA together, creating this thick band in the middle somewhere. So it wasn't completely light and it wasn't completely heavy, there was a mix. Then, in the second generation, after another replication had taken place, what they found was some of the bacteria had DNA that was entirely light, so it was entirely made of 14 N nucleotides, and some of the bacteria still had that mixed DNA. These results clearly demonstrated that Stahl was right, and it is semi-conservative replication, which is how DNA replicates. Because in the first generation, as you can see, we'd expect a mix of old and new strands. So the old DNA in this case was the heavy DNA and the new DNA was made with the light new nucleotides. 
Then in the second generation, when they've only got access to new nucleotides, you get a mix. So when we split the strands, there's still an old strand, which can then be built as a template to make a new strand with the new light nucleotides. And then there will be a light strand that then is built with new nucleotides. So that becomes an entirely light DNA molecule. If Messelson was right and conservative replication was taking place, then we wouldn't see any mixed bands at all. And we would see light and heavy in both generations. And what we'd see is maybe a slow disappearing of the heavy chain. But because semi-conservative replication occurs, we're always going to have that heavy chain as part of the new DNA every generation. This seems a little bit complicated, but realistically, you need to be able to interpret the results. So if they show you tubes like this with the different bandings and get you to explain why there is a band in the middle or why that band is a bit thicker or why they then had a light band and a mixed band instead of a light band and a heavy band, then you can talk about how you understand semi-conservative replication to work and that there is always a conserved chain from the, the DNA molecule before and that acts as a template. So there will always be a strand from the previous generation's DNA in the new one. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.